A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 37, machining two identical parts in the lathe and stainless steel using the freehand method. These parts are to secure the ashpan grate assembly, making removal quick and simple without tools. I like the design of this type of boiler because if you get into trouble and the water runs low, you can just remove the heat source. In a boiler which has a conventional firebox, this is not quite so easy. You have to pull out one or sometimes two dump pins to drop the ash pan. And then the fire ends up underneath the locomotive, often in the wrong place, like somewhere on the track where you don't want it. The ash pan assembly on this locomotive is held in place by two simple clamps, which in turn are held in position using two M5 nuts. This was not a good idea because to remove the nuts you would need a spanner. These clips you've been watching are before I painted the ash pan assembly. And here I'm painting it using high temperature paint. And as a bit of a bonus in this video, here is a shot of the paint drying. Time now to start the turning operation. This is a piece of stainless steel. It's much harder and not quite as easy to cut as the piece of stainless steel that I used to make the traction engine cylinder cover. This is a clip from a previous video showing the use of a brand new lathe tool. This piece of stainless steel is in my smart and brown lathe, but I think for the purposes of the video I'm going to transfer it into the Boxford because that's more realistic. The smart and brown is a very large tool room lathe, but it's not typical of lathes that you find in many home workshops. For the rest of the operation, I'm going to use my old Boxford lathe. This is not quite so large and not quite so rigid. I'm spraying plenty of lubricant on and I really wish it wouldn't come out of the nozzle like this. I know, I'll put the aerosol can into reverse. For this job, I'm using a round nose tool, which really is pointing in the wrong direction. This is designed to cut from left to right, whereas normally I would cut from right to left. I use this lathe tool for the benefit of the video because the tool post is not in the way of the camera and I can get shots from this area. Initially the lathe was running too fast, now it's running in back gear, which slows down the spindle speed and at the same time makes the lathe more powerful. After I turned this shape into the work, I disengaged the back gear and used a centre drill to drill a hole in the end. I'm going to make two of these components and I don't want either of them to look big and clumsy so I'm turning down the bottom part to make it look much slimmer and for this I'm using one of the lathe tools that I modified recently so that it fits in the Boxford lathe. Once I turned the bottom part to the thickness I required it was time to knurl the main body of the component. Knurling puts a pattern on the surface of the metal, which makes it much easier to grip. Even though you may not be aware of it, you've seen and used knurled parts in your life many times. As I was doing this job, I was thinking that I could make knobs for guitars from stainless steel, but then I thought, no, I don't think that's going to be a very viable option. The knurling tool has been moved across the work using the longitudinal traverse. I don't want the knurl to be too deep, just sufficient to be able to grip it. The depth of the knurl is relative to the amount of pressure that you put on it. There are different types of knurling tools. This one just needs pressure from the cross slide. Some knurling tools act like a clamp. As I'm making two of these, it would have been a better idea to use the clamp type knurl. That way I could set it the same for the second part. There are some more operations before I part off this component. The first one is to round the end before I part it off. For this I'm using the round nose tool and in actual fact it didn't work out as planned. When I made the second one it didn't look identical to the first. So I used a different method, I'll show that shortly. In this clip I'm enlarging the centre hole that I drilled in the work with a tapping size drill for M5 which is 4.2 millimetres according to something I found on the internet. You may find this interesting, I'm tapping the hole and as you can see the tap is slipping round in the chuck 
because this is a keyless chuck and it's not as tight as one that uses a chuck key. Not good engineering practice, obviously, but at least I don't break many taps. I really like this old boxwood lathe that I use. It's not too big, not too small, and this clip shows me parting off quite a hard piece of stainless steel with a small parting tool. Once it had cooled, here is the part in my hand. It still needs a little bit more work, but you get the general idea. Now I need to copy this. Once again, other than a micrometer for the initial diameters, I'm not using any measuring equipment. I'm just holding the first part next to the second part and copying it. I made this second part in exactly the same way as the first one, with the exception of not using the round nose tool before I parted it off. Once parted off, I fitted the component into the chuck, holding it by the knurled part, and then I faced across the front. I used a very fine manual feed and got a great finish on the end. Then with the same tool, I rotated the tool post to use it as a chamfering tool. And here we are, two almost identical components. Maybe the knurling is a bit deeper on one than the other, but life is not perfect. Here they are fitted in place, and I'm sure you will agree it's better than using a pair of 5mm nuts. That's it, a quick and simple job which is really good practice for any beginners. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.